Good evening, everyone. It's now 6.03 p.m. on Monday, May the 4th, 2021. Thank you for your interest and your attendance in this virtual public hearing this evening. The hearing is now considered open. My name is Betsy Huddleston, and I am the Regional Supervisor for the Division of Air Quality, Washington Regional Office. I have been appointed as the hearing officer for this public, public hearing by the Director of the Division of Air Quality, Mike Abrazinskis. My purpose this evening is to receive your comments, either written or oral, for consideration on the issuance of an air quality permit to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill for permit renewal and consolidation of four permit applications uh, requests related to boiler operations and emergency generator conditions and the current Title V permit. UNC's existing power generation facility is located at 200 East Cameron Avenue in Chapel Hill. The focus of this hearing, and the only focus, is to receive public comments on the proposed air quality permit as they relate to the applicability of air quality regulations. The Division of Air Quality is conducting this public hearing digitally to allow for public participation while protecting public health under the current guidance to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The public hearing announcement was published in the News of Orange on March 31st, 2021, and on the Division of Air Quality's website also on March 31st, 2021. During this virtual public hearing, we will be receiving oral comments from those individuals who are pre-registered to speak for the event. If you are having technical difficulties using WebEx, you can use the chat feature in WebEx to ask questions or seek assistance. You can also visit the Division of Air Quality's website using the link in the public notice for this hearing for instructions on various ways to connect to WebEx. Joining me for this hearing tonight by WebEx are several DAQ Raleigh Central Office and Raleigh Regional Office representatives. From DAQ Central Office, we have Michael Pajekstra, who is the Deputy Director for the Division of Air Quality. We have Zainab Nassif, the Division of Air Quality's Public Information Officer. We have Rahat Ashik, who is the Environmental Engineer, Engineer 2 with the Rules Development Branch, and he is also our WebEx host, WebEx host tonight. And we have David Hughes, who is the Raleigh Central Office Permit Engineer, who has drafted the permit for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. From DAQ's Raleigh Regional Office, we have Taylor Hartsfield, who is the Supervisor for the Raleigh Regional Office. And we have Will Wyke, who is the Compliance Supervisor. We have Dina Pittman, the Permit Coordinator for the Raleigh Regional Office. And we have Jeff Harris, who is the Engineer 2 and the Compliance Inspector for the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. There may also be some local officials with us tonight, and we thank you for attending. The Division of Air Quality's regulations do not require a hearing for the issuance of this permit. However, due to significant public interest, the Division Director has decided to conduct this public hearing to receive pertinent public comments on whether to allow, modify, or deny issuance of the air permit to UNC Chapel Hill. The comment period for this permit opened on March 31st, 2021, and it will close on May 6th, 2021 at 5 p.m. In addition to your oral comments tonight, the division is also accepting comments via email, electronic mail, regular mail, phone, and phone to a voicemail box. The email address and phone number for the voicemail is displayed on your screen. Oral, electronic, and written comments will all be considered equally. Copies of the permit applications, the air permit application review, the draft air permit and other information concerning the UNC Chapel Hill applications are available on the DAQ website at www.ncair.org. They are also available to the public at the following locations. First, it is at the NC Department of Environmental Quality Raleigh Regional Office, which is located at 3800 Barrett Drive in Raleigh. And it's also at the Division of Air Quality Central Office, located with the permit section at 217 West Jones Street, also in Raleigh. 
If you wish to review any materials in person, they're available to you during normal business hours at these locations I just mentioned. However, due to COVID-19 pandemic, you're going to have to get an appointment first. So please call in advance to make that appointment. Remember again, comments period closes on the 6th at 5, p 5 p.m. So the order of events for this evening are as follows. First, Mr. David Hughes, the Raleigh Central Office Permit Engineer, who reviewed the applications and wrote the draft permit, will discuss the applications, the air quality permit, and the air permitting procedures. This will be followed by the public comment period. We will receive oral comments from those individuals who have pre-registered to speak for the event. This will allow us to have an accurate reporting record. Only those who have pre-registered will be called on to speak. To provide enough time for public comments, this meeting will be conducted in the following manner. All efforts will be made to call the speakers in the same order as your registration. Oral statements will be limited to a maximum of three minutes in order to hear as many people as possible. This public hearing is scheduled to adjourn no later than 9 p.m. tonight. We will call the names of each pre-registered speaker in order and our WebEx host, Rahat, will unmute the speaker when it's your turn to speak. We will also announce, announce the name of the next speaker in the queue so they can prepare to provide comments. Please do not start, start speaking until the WebEx host has indicated that you're able to unmute your microphone. Your time will begin when you have unmuted the microphone. We will keep track of your time and will announce when your three minutes have expired. You will see a clock on your screen that will tell you how much time has expired. Please respect the time of all who wish to present oral ar arguments tonight by adhering to these time limits and closing your remarks as quickly as possible once your time is up. Cross-examination of the person presenting the comments or me, the hearing officer, will not be allowed tonight. Questions directed to the Div Division of Air Quality staff members will not be answered during this hearing. If you have questions for DAQ staff, we can provide you with contact information so you may contact them after the meeting during normal work hours. After receiving comments this evening, the hearing record will be closed. However, the period for submitting comments again does not close until Thursday, May the 6th at 5 o'clock. Again, the only focus of the virtual public hearing in this presentation of comments related to air quality issues associated with this new air quality permit for UNC and the applicability of those regulations will apply tonight. Only relevant air quality comments can be considered in my final recommendations to our division director. I'll now call on David Hughes, the permitting engineer uh, from Division of Air Quality Raleigh Central Office to discuss the air permitting procedures and the permit application review. Uh, thanks, Betsy. Um, I will now uh, give a brief summary of each of the four applications. The permitting action is the combination of four applications for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Next slide, please. Application number 15A. This application was the, for, for significant modification to boiler six and seven to incorporate tested and approved limestone injection rate now, oxygen trim concentration operating limits into the Title V permit under the 112J state MAC condition. The permit in place at the time of application submittal required UNC to conduct 112J performance tests on boilers 6 and 7 to code generation facility. The two boilers are equipped with limestone injection and backhouse air pollution control systems with control of acid gases and particulate matter regulated by the 112J state MAC. During the 112J performance test, UNC was required to monitor the concurrent limestone injection rates and oxygen trim concentrations to establish operating limits to be monitored for continuous compliance with the 112J emission limits for HCL equivalents, mercury, and carbon monoxide. Three 112J performance tests were performed. Compliance with the 112J emission limits was demonstrated and the approved operating Limits were established. However, because the 112J permit condition was replaced with the 112D Federal MAC, 40 CFR 63 subpart 5D, no further processing of this application will be necessary as part of this permitting action. Next slide, please. Application number 15B. This permitting action is a renewal of the existing Title V permit pursuant to Regulation 02Q0513. 
The renewal application 15B was received timely on July 24th, 2015, or at least nine months prior to the original expiration date, April 30th, 2016. This application completes the procedural requirements for Title V renewal submittal pursuant to Part 70. Specific changes include, but are not limited to, updating all equipment lists for inclusion of all current sources slash control devices, removal of duplicate source descriptions from the specific limitations and conditions section of the permit, updating of all permit conditions to the current Title V shell format and language, replacement of the state boiler MAC with the federal boiler MAC, removal of other non-applicable permit conditions, and addition of the current set of general Title V conditions. Next slide, please. Application number 18A. This application is for a minor modification pursuant to regulation 02Q0515 to add dry sorbent injection systems, one each on boiler six and seven to supplement the existing hydrogen chloride controls provided by the limestone injection and baghouse systems to ensure compliance with the 112D federal MAC HCL emission limit. Next slide, please. Application number 19A. This application is for a minor modification pursuant to regulation 02Q0515 for the replacement of one existing diesel fire emergency generator with one new diesel fired emergency generator at the Dean Smith Center. Other non significant modifications were included and are detailed in the application. Next slide, please. In addition to these four applications, the permit also been modified to include a new one hour SO2 national ambient air quality standard permit condition and specific operating parameters representing actual operating conditions of affected units at the facility. These modifications were a direct result of the modeling performed by UNC indicating compliance with both the one hour standards for NO2 and SO2 in response to comments and modeling supplied by third parties during the first noticing of the Title V re renewed permit in September of 2018. This concludes the summary of the four applications. Thank you, David. So at this time, we will hear from those of you who have pre-registered to provide oral comments this evening. When your name's called, our WebEx host, Rahat, will enable you to unmute your microphone so you can provide your comments. To ensure our records are complete, please clearly state your name and who you are representing. Your comments will be recorded, so please speak loudly and clearly toward your microphone or telephone. Please do not start speaking until you have unmuted your microphone. If you're using a telephone, please press star three to raise your hand so Rahat can recognize you. It is critically important that for audio clarity of your comments that you turn off any speakers that you have that can create feedback. If there's significant feedback on your line, we may have to mute your call and then come back to you later in the hearing. If we call your name but cannot hear you, please check to see if you're muted on the WebEx screen on your computer. If you're having audio issues, you can try a different method of audio connection within WebEx or use the call me feature to have WebEx call your personal telephone. If we still cannot hear you, we will proceed to the next registered speaker, but we will come back to you later in the hearing. I will do my best to pronounce your names correctly, but I apologize in advance if I make any errors. So I'm sorry, I may do a terrible job on this tonight and, and I, I'm sorry, I apologize. So to get started, we'll begin taking oral our, um, comments. So our first person to speak this evening is Mr. Robert Ukiley, and then following Mr. Ukiley is Vlodek Gabara. Robert, your line has been unmuted. Go ahead and make your oral statement, please. Thank you. My name is Robert Ukiley. I work for the Center for Biological Diversity. Under the theory of better late than never, I thank you for the opportunity to comment this evening. Um, during the summary, Mr. Hughes explained that the permit contains a limit 
on sulfur dioxide air pollution. It does contain a limit, but the limit is essentially useless. We did computer modeling that shows even with a new limit, the UNC will violate the health-based standards that US EPA set for sulfur dioxide. In addition, we previously did modeling to show that the the UNC under the current permit will violate the health-based standard for nitrogen dioxide. UNC, or the division added a new permit limit, but again, it does nothing to protect the public. So our modeling still demonstrates that is currently permitted um, UNC will violate these healthy standards. The analogy I could use to explain why the permit limits are useless is if you think about eating cookies, if one cookie has 100 calories and you eat one cookie, you get 100 calories. But if you eat five cookies, then you get five calories. The UNC permit does not limit the number of cookies in this analogy. So UNC can pollute as much as it wants, as long as it keeps below that rate of 100 calories per cookie. But there's no limit on the amount of cookies. Cookies are a good thing, in my opinion, but the UNC pollution can kill people. It can cause asthma attacks. It's most dangerous to children, people that exercise outside, people with pre existing conditions, and the current permit provides no protection. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ukiling. Our next speaker will be Vladek Gabara, and following uh, Vladek, we will have um, Perrin de Young. Um, Vladek, uh, your line has um, please uh, in, please press star three so uh, I can uh, identify your line and unmute you. Again, Vlodek, if you uh, used a telephone to uh, dial in uh, for today's uh, public hearing, please press star three so I can identify your line uh, to unmute you. Thank you. Um, we'll have to move on to the next person. All right. So next, our speaker will be Perrin DeYoung. And following uh, Perrin will be Nick Trombetta. Perrin, uh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead and make your statements now. Thank you. My name is Perrin DeYoung, and I work for the Center for Biological Diversity in Asheville. I grew up in Chapel Hill with severe childhood asthma and many other respiratory illnesses that landed me in the emergency room, unable to breathe so many times that I lost count always seemed to be playing outside that caused the trouble. We're here to, tonight to talk about the heat input limit in UNC's permit. Um, the removal of the heat input limit from UNC's air pollution permit is the most significant and controversial change being proposed by DAQ. And the heat input limit is essentially how, a limit on how much coal UNC can burn per hour. Um, the center and the Sierra Club are in litigation against UNC um, for violations of their existing air pollution permit. And through that litigation, we've identified 7,830 violations of UNC's existing air pollution permit since December of 2014. Included in those violations are 269 violations of the heat input limit since May 2019. 
A federal a judge ruled in October that UNC's heat input limit is in its current permit is an enforceable permit limit. And now the North Carolina Division of Air Quality is trying to remove the heat input limit from UNC's new draft air pollution permit. The first problem with this is a very simple one. The more coal that UNC burns, the more pollution comes out of the smokestack. It's a very simple idea, and that's why the heat input limit is such a basic and important pollution control measure that's needed in UNC's permit. A second and related problem is that without an enforceable heat input limit in UNC's air pollution permit, DAQ cannot control the total amount of real-world deadly sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide pollution that UNC can emit from its smokestack. And this threatens the local community with air quality violations. Specifically, it threatens uh, violations of the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, or NACs, and that, of course, is DAQ's responsibility to maintain. Uh, those air quality standards. Lastly, DAQ left the removal of the heat input limit out of the table of changes in the draft permit. This is a table at the beginning of the draft permit that's designed to notify the public of changes being made in the new permit. Again, the removal of the heat input limit is the most controversial and significant change proposed for the new permit, and this is not a good way to build trust with the public or project an image of DAQ's independence from UNC. Thank you. Thank you, Perrin. Um, next, Nick Trombetta will, sp will speak, and then following Nick will be Javita Lee. Nick, if you have uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line to unmute you. Nick, uh, if you've dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Okay, um, we'll have to move on to the next person. Alrighty. All right, so our next speaker will be Javita Lee, and following Javita will be Will Harlan. Javita, your uh, line has been unmuted. Go ahead and make your oral statements now. Good evening. I am Javita Lee, the senior environmental justice campaigner for the Center for Biological Diversity. I'm here before you this evening um, to say that I'm disappointed by the attempt to remove the heat input limit from the drafted air pollution permit for UNC Chapel Hill's coal fire power plant. The concept of this is simple. If the limit is removed, there will be no way that North Carolina Division of Air Quality will be able to monitor or control the amount of sulfur uh, dioxide that UNC can permit. If we allow for this, this is a green light for UNC to increase the amount of coal burn, therefore creating an enormous uptick in pollution amounts. Not only that, North Carolina DAQ decided that this issue wasn't important enough for the community to be aware of, so the decision was made to eliminate it from the table of changes, which is specifically designed to inform the public of new information pertaining to a permit. The lack of regard for community health and safety, as well as the protection of our environment, is both egregious and unacceptable. It also shows the public that there is truly no separation between this state agency and the university. The dependency this institution has had on fossil fuels has harmed the community for decades, specifically and historically black and brown communities, with the coal plant being moved adjacent to historically black neighborhoods such as Northside and Pine Knolls, a landfill four miles north, originally without a, line, a liner, and public record proving the racism and disdain this area, this state, and this nation has had for black and brown folks for generations. It is absolutely not a stretch to make the ever so blunt connection between this plant's pollution, location, and racism. We are in the midst of a climate emergency. That means that we simply do not have the time or the luxury of solving one issue at a time. We must defend against this institution institutional harm, the red tape of our legislature, and this corporate energy um, harm that we are seeing in this state. The decision of the agency to not include this limit in the current drafted permit is nothing more than an extension of the aforementioned legacy. There's been a continual effort by the state to eliminate, ignore, and disregard the voice of the community in order to move forward with bad practices, but that stops here. 
It is the right of the community to hold agencies such as this and institutions such as UNC and others accountable. The Center for Biological Diversity remains in solidarity with the people of Chapel Hill and Carborough and demanding transparency, accountability, and protections from this agency. Thank you. Thank you, Javita. Uh, our next speaker is Will Harlan, and following Will is Barbara Johnston. Will, your line has been unmuted. Go ahead and make your statements now, please. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, weakening the UNC coal permit by removing the heat input is completely unacceptable, especially in the middle of a respiratory pandemic uh, to a coal plant near a major hospital and located in a historically black community. Uh, with ongoing litigation concerning the heat input limit, it seems highly suspicious that DAQ would suddenly remove the heat input limit from this draft permit, especially when over 269 violations of the heat input limit have been documented since May 2019. DAQ does not pro provide any rationale or justification for removing the heat input limit, but simply remove the relevant provision. Now, this heat input limit uh, is the capacity rating, essentially, for these boilers. In other words, these boilers weren't designed to burn more coal than 323.17 uh, BTUs per hour uh, at a time. So if they exceed the heat input limit, they're running the boilers in a way that they weren't designed to handle. So it should be no surprise that the boilers will not operate as designed when they're overloaded with coal and that they will produce excessive pollution. And that is what happens every time they exceed the heat input limit. Every time they violate this, this heat input limit, which They've done repeatedly since 2019, and without an enforceable heat input limit in this draft permit, they will continue to do. That overloads communities, especially adjacent to the coal plant, with excessive amounts of pollution. These communities are, have already been burdened by uh, excessive pollution from this UNC coal plant, and removing the heat input limit will only exacerbate health conditions uh, at in these communities of Northside and Pine Knolls, and especially the health conditions of patients at the UNC hospitals. UNC District uh, Judge Catherine Eagles ruled last October that the heat input limit is an enforceable permit provision. The main reason she decided this is because the heat input limit is used as a variable in the equations to calculate whether UNC is in compliance with the permit limits on sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide emissions. So the, the heat input limit is a vital part of the equations. Without an enforceable heat input limit, DAQ simply can't enforce the sulfur dioxide and nit nitrogen dioxide emissions limits that are listed in the current permit and the draft permit. And just from a common sense perspective, the more coal you dump into the boiler at a time, the more pollution will come out of the stack. That's what the heat input in limit is all about. And by removing the heat input limit from this draft permit, you're essentially saying to UNC, dump more coal and pollution on these vulnerable communities, on the students, faculty, and staff of UNC, on the Chapel Hill community that is unacceptable. Your role as UNC, as regulators is to ensure the health and safety of the people that are most affected by this permit. Thanks so much. Thank you, Will. Our next speaker will be Barbara Johnston and following Barbara will be Marty Clemens. Barbara, your yes. line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Um, um, friends, uh, I'm speaking as a concerned UNC School of Medicine alumni and a practicing internist treating HIV positive patients as part of a community health center in Durham. Our flagship public UNC Chapel Hill should be a leader in the US in innovating in clean energy and in protecting vulnerable communities in the area of power plants from all the health problems that attend dirty coal plants the increased rates of asthma, increasing other pulmonary pulmonary problems, and the exacerbation of smoking-related diseases. Unfortunately, North Carolina still has its share. I understand that Holden Thorpe committed the University of, uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill to be coal-free by 2020, and then the, the university has reneged on that commitment. I, I would like to know why. I'm a donor to UNC through a fund called the Global Community Fund. Uh, through it, my goal was to support medical students who want to carry on a project to possibly impact the community and to learn that there are social 
and environmental factors that have an impact on the health of individuals in their community. We need to stop now propagating dirty processes that have a negative impact on our local and eventually on our national and global climate. Increasing the limits for pollution is exactly the wrong way to go. UNC needs to make a commitment to reduce emissions and to begin the process of instituting 21st century solutions. They also have a particular responsibility to avoid harm to the vulnerable community near the plant, which is, as I understand, largely an African American neighborhood. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Barbara. Our next speaker is Marty Clemens, and following Marty will be Maple Osterbrink. Marty, if you have dialed in by phone, uh, please press star three so we can identify your line, please. Marty, if you've dialed in by phone, please press star three so we can identify your line. Okay, uh, we'll have to move on. All right. Well, our next speaker then will be Maple Osterbrink, and following Maple is Lynn Lyle. Maple, uh, please um, go ahead and make your oral comments now. Um, not sure why her, uh, we're, we're not I, unable to unmute her. We'll have to come back to her. I'm sorry, Maple. We will come back to you. All right, our next speaker speaker will be Lynn Lyle, and following Lynn will be Margaret Munzer. Lynn, your line has been unmuted. Go ahead and make your oral statements now, please. Thank you for this. Thank you for this opportunity to come tonight. I'm Lynn Lyle. Speaking as an individual, I do serve as president of interfaith creation care of the triangle known as ICCT, a network of 300 people associated with 67 communities of faith in triangle. People of faith have a history of speaking about injustices. I'm concerned about this permit if granted because it would exacerbate environmental racial injustice in Pine Knolls, the adjoining historically black neighborhood, as you've heard, and in other neighborhoods. I'm concerned because the permit would allow weakening of pollution control, specifically eliminating the heat input limit, uh, creating a more adverse health effects for residents, students, and uh, patients in the hospital. It would allow more emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This is the opposite of what should be done in a climate emergency like the one we're in. It's at odds with the North Carolina Clean Energy Plan, which requires uh, the electric utility sector to reduce emissions by 70% from its 2005 level by the year 2030. I asked DAQ to um, make sure that UNC strengthens, not weakens, controls on pollution, and I ask that the heat input limit be restored. <clears throat> I'm also concerned that the permits table of changes at the front does not show the elimination of the heat input limit. Was this simply an oversight? It appears as a lack of transparency and does not encourage public trust. I'll say this, that it's shocking and shameful that such a coal burning plant is still operating on the campus of one of North Carolina's premier universities. It is the responsibility of the university to do its part to protect the climate for future generations educated there and to protect people of color and people of low wealth who are currently suffering to a greater degree by climate change. I'm surprised that the town of Chapel Hill has not called for the plant's closure. What clean alternatives to this plant has the university pursued? What grant proposals have been submitted? UNC certainly has the resources to pursue and affect a clean energy alternative to, alternative to this plant if it has the will. Thank you for allowing me to speak and God bless. Thank you, Lynn. Um, our next speaker will be Margaret Munzer and following Margaret will be Wayne Helms.
Margaret, uh, your line has been unmuted. Go ahead and make your oral statements, please. Yes, I'm Margaret Munzer, and uh, I don't have any climate credentials next to my name other than that I'm a mother and a grandmother. And as I became more active in working against climate change, I found that uh, very sadly that many people in power don't care enough to make the immediate changes that are both inconvenient and costly. It's easier to just say, well, we'll cut our emissions by 2030, 2040, 2050. When I joined the Orange County chapter of Climate Reality, I learned that the university was burning coal. I joined the weekly Friday morning protests in order to let as many people as possible learn, as I did, that UNC continues this practice. I have heard from faculty at UNC who only learned from our protests that this coal plant was on campus. This from a university with majors, minors, or departments in environmental studies, environmental science, sustainability studies, environmental sciences and engineering, environmental law, environmental health sciences, toxicology and environmental medicine, environmental justice, environmental geoscience, environmental epidemiology, environment, ecology, and energy, and environmental anthropology, and I'm sure I, I missed some. This also from a university whose faculty carries out research in the correlation of air pollution and climate change, and the impact of air pollution in a minority community, the dangers of airborne pollutants, identifying populations most vulnerable to air pollution, air pollution and heart attacks and strokes. And again, there are probably many more studies that I didn't find evidence of. If the university with these outstanding credentials can't understand why having no heat input limit in their air permit is a bad idea, not only having burning coal, but that allowing for a higher degree of pollution from the coal burning operation isn't just plain crazy, then it's up to the DAQ to set them straight. So I'm asking you to please deny UNC's air permit. Thank you for allowing me this chance to give public comment. Thank you, Margaret. Our next speaker is Wayne Helms and following Wayne will be Amelia Covington. Wayne, uh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Uh, okay, do I sound all right? I also have the phone plugged in. You sound great to me. Okay, thanks for having me. I grew up in Chapel Hill and Carborough. Uh, I, I've lived all over both towns, and my younger brother and I were plagued by respiratory afflictions that have pers persisted for the rest of our lives. Uh, even after leaving the area as adults, the damage done throughout our childhood continues to affect us. Well, there's a plume of dense, toxic smoke full of deadly pollutants pumping right out of the center of a major population cluster a minute from downtown, smogging up everything around it. And it has been my whole life. Now it's other little kids getting a bad start in life. The whole population's being hammered by this stuff day and night. And UNC is perfectly aware of the damage they're doing to the air and the people. And they have proven beyond doubt that they cannot be trusted to regulate it themselves. Uh, we have to keep the heat input limit in UNC's air pollution permit. They are never going to limit the amount of pollution they emit unless you limit how much coal they can burn. We can't control deadly respiratory pollutants unless you have a heat input limit. Uh, it's been a constant assault, not only on the poor communities who live directly around it, who are historically shafted at every turn, uh, but also, in this case, it's a constant assault on the middle class and the rich and their children and every UNC student, faculty, staff member. And since this steady poisoning of all the community day in, day out does not exempt the privileged, since it doesn't only bring lung disease and premature death to the mostly African American communities from Johnson Street to Ten Top, but also poisons the white elite and their kids, and this council and their kids. Maybe this school that wants to be seen as so ahead of its rivals will finally be made to acknowledge its unconscionable 
irreparable crimes against everyone in range and will be the last of its kind to stop killing its neighbors, ruining air quality, driving climate change, all on the false idea that, you know, cheap fuel, uh, which is in the big picture far beyond what we can afford and its effects. And if you didn't care about any of that, UNC's coal plant is a moral failure and uh, embarrassment to our state. Uh, it's the last college or university in North Carolina keeping such a stupid, nasty, backwards relic that's throwing up smog like a chimney from the underworld. Let's keep and tighten the heat index limit, and then let's hurry up shutting this full thing down, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne. Our next speaker will be Amelia Covington, and following Amelia will be Sean Sullivan. Amelia, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for this opportunity to speak and comment. Um, my name is Amelia, and I am a field organizer with Climate Action NC. We're an environmental organization in the Triangle in Charlotte fighting for environmental and climate justice. I also grew up in Chapel Hill. I still consider this town to be home. And like others, I'm speaking today to urge you to deny this draft air permit. Our community needs a stronger air permit that actually lessens the risks associated with the coal burning power plants. And we need stricter regulations on this facility. At a minimum, the heat input limit must be restored as an explicit enforceable permit in UNC's final Title V permit. Under the current draft air permit, UNC may be able to burn even more coal and emit even more toxic air pollutants, threatening the health and well being of UNC students, staff, and faculty, the patients at UNC Hospital, and the surrounding community. And like others have noted, I just want to emphasize that this is an environmental justice issue with the coal burning plant on Cameron Avenue located adjacent to historically black neighborhoods, uh, including North Side and Pine Knolls. And ultimately, I think that this aging, outdated and expensive coal plant must be retired as soon as possible for the health of our surrounding communities and our collective future in the midst of a climate emergency. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Our next speaker will be Sean Sullivan and following Sean will be Suzanne Hume. Sean, um, if you've joined by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line, please. Okay, Sean, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Hey, um, I'm Sean Sullivan and I'm speaking as a concerned resident of the area. Uh, I've grown up in Chapel Hill. Um, I've lived here my whole life, moved around to different houses and a coal plant in the center of one of the most, or what claims to be one of the most progressive universities in the state is really out of order with what the values of this area should be and what the values of most of the people who live here are. Um, it's an outdated energy source and taking steps in the wrong direction, like a more lenient permit, is not the right way to go when there's people who are suffering from respiratory illness, people who really can't afford to be breathing in air that doesn't meet the standards that it should. Um, it's really something that should have been closed a long time ago. Um, and Taking a step in the wrong direction is, well, the wrong direction. We should take a step in the right direction and deny the air quality permit and move closer to shutting down the coal plant once and for all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Sean. Our next speaker is Suzanne Hume, and following Suzanne will be Alexa Kleistuber. Suzanne, uh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much to everyone here. 
My name is Suzanne Hume, and I'm the educational director and founder of cleanearthforkids.org, a nonprofit working to protect children's health, clean air, clean water, non toxic public lands, environmental justice, racial justice, and social justice through education and collaboration. Cleanearthforkids.org opposes the permit for the UNC Chapel Hill coal plant. Coal is incredibly dirty. We don't need this. Think about the University of California that has divested from fossil fuels, Georgetown, and prominent universities throughout the country and throughout the world that are saying no to fossil fuels. This is an embarrassment for UNC, an absolute embarrassment. I have been a teacher for decades on many levels in many places in many states. When we found out that there was a coal plant on the campus of UNC where you have spectacular programs, I was shocked. We were all shocked. Most of all, the youth that had planned to go to UNC were thinking about reconsidering their decision. Today, we need to make a change. You cannot have that coal plant there, and you should close down the coal plants, all of them in North Carolina. There's no reason for that when we have cheap renewable energy. If you'd like examples or like to reach out and talk with us or others that are using renewable energy for low cost, then that's what's needed. Coal ash, coal dust, and coal, <laughs> it poisons the air and the soil and food pregnant women and children are ecosystems, and we should not allow it. Mercury results in neurological problems, problems with the brain, vision, hearing, liver, kidney, and causes tremors. Burning coal results in lead. It damages the brain, causes behavior disorders and learning problems. And there's cadmium and chromium and arsenic and selenium, and I could go on and on. Short-term exposure, long-term exposure. We need to stop this now. Please make the right decision for our children and their future. Regain your status, UNC. Regain your status that you really care about children's health and their future. To continue with this is to soil your reputation, everyone that's worked there and worked hard. Please, please, do not go forward with this and definitely do not approve this permit. Thank you from cleanearthforkids.org. Thank you, Suzanne. Our next speaker will be Alexa Kleistuber and following Alexa will be Joan Ring. Alexa, uh, your line has, um, please, uh, if you join by phone, um, so I can uh, press start so I can identify you, okay? Uh, Alexa, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. This is. I'm just letting you know I'm ready. This is Osterbrink Maple. Okay, I, I apologize. Um, we'll call on you after um, at the end at the end of the list. Okay, thank you. Um, Alexa, if you've joined us by phone, uh, please press star three so we can identify your line. Okay, we'll have to move on. Okay. All right, so our next speaker will be Joan Rame and followed by Joan will be Joc sorry, Jocelyn Sai. Joan, uh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you. I moved to Chapel Hill five years ago and I am commenting tonight as an individual, as a resident of Chapel Hill. Prior to this time, I have never publicly issued a statement either in favor of or against a government action. I'm a retired attorney and I'm stepping forward at this time to strongly object to the draft air permit renewal recently issued to UNC amidst a climate emergency declared by the town of Chapel Hill. The Cameron Avenue coal plant provides electricity and steam for the Chapel Hill UNC campus and hospitals. In its own recently issued climate action plan, UNC states, and I quote from that plan, 
Each year, the energy used in buildings on campus directly and indirectly contributes to roughly 70 to 75% of Carolina's greenhouse gas emissions, end quote. North Carolina's Division of Air Quality draft air permit for the UNC coal plan does not contain a heat input limit. This lack of a heat input limit will no doubt result in increased or higher in heat inputs necessitated by the aging UNC coal plant. Higher heat inputs result in less efficiency and more toxic emissions. It only follows then reducing heat input limits will result in less toxic emissions. In a report issued by the US Congressional Research Service, quote, increasing the efficiency of existing coal-fired power plants written by Richard J. Richard J. Campbell, a specialist in energy policy, quote, a lower heat rate represents a more efficient generating unit since it requires less heat input to generate a kilowatt hour of electric energy. A generating unit can thus improve its efficiency by reducing the fuel it uses relative to a specific amount of electricity generated, thus reducing the amount of CO emitted. A permit that removes heat input limits provides no incentive for UNC to improve either the operations or efficiency of the Cameron coal plant. And as that facility continues to operate with no heat input limits, it will result in more toxic emissions, which will increase UNC's contributions to Carolina's greenhouse gas emissions well beyond its current 70 to 75 percent level. Surely a university entrusted to provide a higher education to future generations should also at a minimum be expected to protect the health of those generations. The current draft air permit renewal for the UNC coal plant must be denied in favor of adopting a stronger, more protective permit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan. Our next speaker will be Jocelyn Sai, and following Jocelyn is Margot Francini. Jocelyn, if you dialed in by phone, please uh, press star three so I can identify your line. Thank you. Okay, we'll have to uh, move on. Okay, so our next speaker is now Margot Francini, and following Margot is Elizabeth Onan. Margot, if you've uh, joined us by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Okay, I believe this is um, Margot. I believe this is you. Uh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Um, hello, my name is Margo Francini. I'm an incoming freshman at the UNC Gilling School of Public Health and also the founder of Earth Uprising Chapel Hill, a group that's been advocating against the burning of coal and fossil fuels altogether on campus since our inauguration last July. We see this dirty energy deriving practice as heavily detrimental to the health of students, community members, and the environment. And so we've been leading strikes to raise awareness of the issue in the Chapel Hill community. And while that's important, what really needs to happen is that the people with the money, the people who have, been, have taken responsibility for the decision making at this university and at the state legislative level, such as the Board of Governors and the NC General Assembly, they need to start walking the walk after they've been talking the talk for at least the past decade regarding this coal plant issue. And as we all know, in 2010, Chancellor Thorpe said UNC would be shutting down the plant and abandoning the use of coal by 2020. And clearly, this did not happen since we're all here today. These promises cannot be tossed around by our state's flagship university if they still want to retain a full sense of pride with that title. What's more, if anything, the university should not backtrack and install a much needed transition that is crucial for a nationwide effort towards shifting to reliance on sustainable energy infrastructure. It's ironic that this issue is actually what got me into wanting to major in environmental health sciences at UNC in the first place. And I personally find it quite hypocritical that UNC boasts the best public health school in the nation while it's simultaneously spewing harmful pollutants into the air and failing the community that the university should be benefiting. And don't get me wrong, I love this school. Its academics are amazing and high achieving, and I cannot wait to enter into the Carolina community next year. 
But just the same, I'm disappointed that even with all the public outcry, grant money, the current situation with the climate crisis, the university is esteemed national standing and verbal commitment towards constructing an equitable, sustainable future for all, UNC with the draft permit as is, will be getting yet another break to continue the burning of dirty fossil fuels on their campus in the heart of Chapel Hill. The disdain starts with coal, which should have been a gimme years ago, but also extends to natural gas, which is not the temporary cure-all that is made out to be. Thus, I call upon the North Carolina Division of Air Quality to re-enlist the heat input limit and make it lower than before so that coal use is forced to be eliminated and that there's accountability, transparency, and honest backing in UNC's alleged efforts to transition towards a truly sustainable campus that runs on clean energy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Marga. Our next speaker is Elizabeth O'Nan, and following Elizabeth is Sammy Slade. Elizabeth, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Elizabeth O'Nan, and I serve as chair for the Chapel Hill Organization for Clean Energy. And we are opposing the per permit for the UNC coal plant. And I would echo uh, everyone else's um, urgent message here tonight, and that is to reinstate the heat input restrictions on the plant. But I would go further and say they need to be reduced to zero. This plant has been tolerated for far too long. I'm personally affected by the release from this polluter, and I also represent a significant, significant popula subpopulation of disabled individuals that suffer from a disability called toxicant induced loss of tolerance. And generally, these are people that have been disabled by the previous governments and uh, local. Um, um, regulators inability to, to regulate safely. And these people deserve to be recognized and heard. We're not disposable. My health has been impaired by the poor air quality in this area. In addition to being disabled by tilt, I have uh, had surgery and radiation treatment for thyroid cancer, have an inoperable brain tumor, and this week I was diagnosed with skin cancer. I've suffered um, breathing problems, chronic nosebleeds, this is since we've moved here. Coughing, choking, dizziness, seizures, rashes, weakness, sleeplessness, uh, an anencephalic reactions, elevated glucose levels, curtailed exercise due to pollution, increased cranial pressure and confusion from lack of oxygen, just to name a few. This certainly, this facility certainly causes addictive uh, additive effects and presents additional assaults on my health, as well as the other people in our organization where there's nobody that's not affected by this chronic pollution. Public health threats are presented by the release of sulfur dioxide emissions that have increased by 50% during the most recent five year period and hazardous pollutants shown uh, an increasing trend of 58% with a startling increase in 19, pardon me, in 2015 of 113%. The hazardous air pollutants responsible for 80 to 90% of the HAP total is hydrogen chloride. HCL vapor is heavier than air and may concentrate in low-lying areas such as the area where I live. And uh, hydrogen chloride forms corrosive hydrochloric acid on contact with water found in body tissue. Inhalation of the flames, uh, of the fumes rather, um, can cause coughing, choking, inflammation of the nose and throat and upper respiratory tract, and in severe cases, pulmonary edema circulatory system failure and death and uh, pulmonary edema. Ms. Onan, your minutes are up. Your three minutes are up. Can you, can you close your comments, please? Yes, DAQ has abysmally failed in their duty and moral obligation to protect our health and environment. The only right decision is to deny this permit and shut down this coal plant immediately. UNC needs to get a giant extension cord and hook onto the power grid. UNC's poison pushing and premeditated random homicide must be stopped, and these antisocial activities must be severely punished. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Sammy Slade, followed by Jen Galler. Um, uh, Sammy Slade uh, asked to speak at the end, um, so we okay. would move on to the next person. Thanks for that. All right, Jan Galler, you are our next speaker, and following you will be Catherine Tesk. Um, Jen, if you have dialed in by phone, um, please press star three so I can identify your line. Okay, we'll have to uh, come back to her. All righty. Our next speaker is Catherine Tesk, and followed by Catherine is John Batoroff. Catherine, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Good evening. My name is Catherine Teske, and I am a high schooler from Carborough. And I recently learned about the coal plant and with that, everything that I have been breathing in for years. I'm here to voice my concern about the UNC coal plant and to urge the board not to grant the draft air permit due to the removal of the heat input limit. The UNC coal plant is putting out harmful pollutants into the air of the surrounding area, such as hydrochloric acid, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide, as well as lead and mercury. It is being used to make power and steam, but other types of power could do this just as well without harming the area and local residents. The Center for Biological Diversity has found that the, that the existing state issued permit lets the university power plant put out levels of harmful nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide pollution that are four to six times greater than that allowed by the US Clean Air Act. To reiterate, that is at the very least 400% over the amount allowed. The permit you are currently considering would make this even worse. The new permit would remove the heat input limit, which would allow UNC to burn more coal and emit more air pollution. Without a heat input limit, we cannot enforce how much stuff is being released. In these times, we should be reducing the amount of air pollution from the coal plant, plant not increasing it. Every time I walk into downtown Chapel Hill and the UNC campus, I can't help thinking about everything I'm breathing in. I and many others, as you can see in this call, worry about the coal plant and what it is doing to our health and that of our friends and neighbors. And what are we doing this for? Coal is a dying industry. At, so why should we dig our feet in on moving to the more current and healthy friend, health friendly power alternatives? Why should we double down and maximize the amount of harm on people's health when we will inevitably need to switch our source of power? I urge the board to think about your children, your local shop owners, and the families living in nearby neighborhoods, many of which are historically black. They are people with hopes and struggles just like you and their health is in your hands. If you approve this permit, you are personally responsible for, for people's health issues and very likely deaths and you are personally responsible for furthering environmental racism. So for your community and the people you value, do not approve this permit. Thank you, Catherine. Our next speaker will be John Batoroff and followed by John will be Cameron Milne. John, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so we can identify your line. Okay, we'll have to move on. Okay. All right, so Cameron, you are next and following you will be Lib Hutchby. Cameron, okay. your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Cameron Myers Milne. I'm 19 years old and my hometown is Wilson, North Carolina. I'm speaking to you today as a second year student here at UNC Chapel Hill. I've lived on UNC's campus for the last two years, all of last semester and all of this one. 
and I consider this place my home. But only two weeks ago, I learned that UNC has a coal plant on its campus. At the time, I was in the unique position of reporting on this draft permit as a staffer for the Daily Tar Heel, a role which I no longer occupy, nor am I affiliated with, but from which I learned a lot. In my conversations with local residents and activists, I heard how for years this plant has detrimentally affected their health and well-being and their sense of belonging to the university and the state that are supposed to protect and support them. I've been thinking more now about students who, like me, may be new to the area and unfamiliar with the full and fair history of Chapel Hill. I again find myself in the unique position of being able to educate students on this matter in my role as an orientation leader for the university. This summer, I will be interacting personally with nearly 400 incoming students and families who I am responsible for supporting in their transition to Carolina. When I tell my student groups about UNC's coal plant, and I do plan to inform each and every group, what I say is in part up to you and the decisions that you make regarding this draft air permit. I want to tell them that the university and the state prioritize student health and the health of the environment over profit margins and convenience. I want to tell them that when faced with concern from the community, the state listened to the people and adjusted with the times. I want to tell them that in the middle of a viral respiratory public health crisis, the state decided to reinforce the limitations on how much coal UNC's plant can burn, not to remove them. So what will I say? These students are coming to Carolina to thrive in their new environment, not simply to survive it. UNC, the Division of Air Quality, and the state of North Carolina have an obligation to support these students who are quite literally entrusting these entities with their lives. Please consider them and please consider me when you decide how to proceed with this draft permit. I promise you, your decision will change the lives of students for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Our next speaker will be Lib Hutchby, followed by Marie DeYoung. Lib, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Lib Hutchby, and I am uh, speaking for myself as well as for women, the Triangle Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Several members of WILF actually grew up in Carborough and Chapel Hill, and currently there are two who live so close to the power plant that they attend the Friday morning rallies to try to stop this coal-powered plant. In the heart of UNC, at heart of this Chapel Hill, it is unbelievable at this point in time in 2021 that UNC is still a coal-fired plant. Just on Sunday, I was there at the uh, Dan River with indigenous people who were trying to bless the water and pay attention to the land. And it was impossible for me to not think about the coal spill, the coal ash spill from the, in the Dan River and wondering what has happened since then. UNC has choices to make. Women's International League for Peace and Freedom is one of the oldest peacemaking organizations in the country. We insist that UNC find a way to negotiate some peace around climate crisis. It's essential that you have an opportunity now, you see, as the Department of Air Quality and Division of Air Quality has removed the heat input limit from the draft permit, which allows UNC to burn even more coal and emit more toxic air pollution and that, of course, potentially kills more people. We don't like to use those strong words, but it is essential for you to strengthen the permit, not weaken the permit. This permit will lead to increased asthma attacks, respiratory illness, heart attacks, 
and premature death for the surrounding communities and it is already a known fact. It's been stated repeatedly tonight by other speakers. Also, we're very concerned about the uh, obvious in environmental justice issue that's connected to this. The weakened permit will increase the production of coal ash and fly ash, which contains carcinogenic and toxic compounds, including mercury, arsenic, cadmium, and lead, and at a time when we already know that we're busy trying to get lead out of the water, out of water pipes, so we know good and well we don't need it in our air. So once again, I thank you for the opportunity to speak, paying attention to the fact that Title V permit, according to the NCDEQ website, allows over 100 tons a year of a single- Ms. Hutchby, you've exceeded your three pollution. minutes. Can you please close your statement? I give attention again to the Title V permit that is uh, defined on the website. And just to let you know that we just haven't forgotten the coal ash burning in the heart of the campus. And we want our students and every community member to be healthy. So please deny this permit. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hutchby. Our next speaker is Marie DeYoung. And following Marie DeYoung, we are going to circle back to Vladek Gabara. Marie, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you. I uh, would like to say, first of all, that we are just at the moment when our new president has pledged our country will become serious about cleaning up the environment. And at this point, UNC continues to plan to run its coal furnace until 2040. It is an antiquated, irresponsible, and disrespectful, disrespectful approach. Uh, the forward-thinking University of UNC, as it claims to be, is not going to escape notice across the country. I have lived in Chapel Hill for just short. Next month will be 41 years with my two children and uh, have been questioned a number of times uh, in the early days as to why um, statistically I had two out of two children with severe asthma as well as allergies, which typically accompany um, asthma. And uh, my two children uh, each had three near-death experiences. Uh, I was told by one doctor that it would I should have given birth to eight children, this was in the mid-80s, uh, in order to have had two with so many health problems. Uh, the reality is that that problem existed even then, at a time when most people ignored you if you talked about it, even some doctors. Um, did not accept the fact that the problems were as serious as they were, which is very interesting because you look around today and see that so many children in families are suffering from health problems, which are environmentally caused, related, and that also includes animals. We are learning an awful lot about the sickness of the environment, which is affecting other life forms as well. I um, would like to say that if we grant UNC's latest request, 
that is if DAQ does, the uh, Department of Environmental Quality will be allowing UNC free reign to ignore all coal quantity limitations. And this longtime major polluter of the campus and its surrounding communities um, to eliminate restrictions uh, of the amount of coal used in the smokestack uh, will only make matters worse. And uh, we know too much. I'm sorry, you've exceeded point. your three minutes. Can you close your comments? We know too much nowadays, and it would be scandalous if if you would permit this uh, request of the university to go through. In point of fact, it needs to be closed down. There are multiple. Okay, thank you very much for your comments, Ms. Young. You've used up your three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Vlodek Gabara, and following Vlodek will be Nick Trombetta. Vlodek, please, uh, if you dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can ident uh, identify your line, please. Okay, uh, we'll have to move on to the next person. All righty. So our next spe uh, speaker that we are circling back to is Nick Trombetta, and following Nick would be Marty Clemens. Nick, hello. You can you hear me? Yes, Nick. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, first off, thank you so much for having these public comments for letting me talk here. Um, I, I'm Nick Trombetta. I'm a former student at UNC Chapel Hill and a current resident of uh, Chapel Hill as well. And um, my thoughts on the coal power plant are a that it is just somewhat archaic. Um, I feel like we're all kind of living in the past, even you know debating this. Um, you know, with with the rest of the world, you know, facing um, the real significant threats of climate change. Um, Joe Biden calling, um, you know, who you know a lot of people see as a moderate, calling for you know going 100% renewable by 2030. And our own Roy Cooper calling for a significant decreases in uh, carbon emissions, calling for um, a reduction of 40% below 2005 levels by 2025. It, it just seems like a, a slap in the face of the efforts of everyone um, who, who is, you know, you know, putting, putting, putting down their efforts and really standing up for a better future. It just seems to stand in the face of that. So I think we need a it is somewhat outdated. I think we need to say no to this. Um, people, people have to sacrifice for a better future. That is what we all are largely acknowledging we have to do. And it is time for UNC and the state of North Carolina to do the same. As people have also said, it's an environmental justice issue. Um, as this coal plant is near many, you know, historically African American neighborhoods, one of which is Northside, which I actually live in. That is another element of this problem. And I think. We need to we need to be moving, not just thinking about, you know, do we keep having this coal plan or not? We need to be thinking about, you know, much grander than this. This is just kind of I think it is I think it is shameful for this to still be up here. I remember, you know, things might have been different, you know, say six years ago. I understand that. Then the, the thinking might have been, oh, you know, we've got this coal plan, we've invested money in this, but we have acknowledged, I feel like largely, this issue threatens the existence. Of, of of human beings on earth and also you know maybe like 10 years ago it would have been less financially feasible to transition to renewable energy but with renewable energy being largely cost competitive with coal i see no reason why we should even consider doing this given you know the impacts the threat that this poses you know you know towards the, the issue of climate change and the health issues that it cause that it causes you know with coal power coal fired power plants being linked to asthma, cancer, heart and lung ailments. Again, all ailments that make you at risk for COVID-19. I think we need to say no to this coal plant and think much bigger than even the existence of this coal plant and you know, be thinking about how do you move towards a renewable 
feature, a green feature, and just move on from it. But um, thank you so much for having me talk. Thank you, Nick. Our next speaker will be Marty Clemens, and following Marty will be Maple Osterbrink. Marty, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line, please. Marty, please press star three if you've dialed in by phone. Okay, we'll have to move on. Alrighty, our next speaker will be Maple Osterbrink and after Maple will be Alexa Kleistuber. Maple, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three. Okay, Maple, I believe this is you. Um, we have unmuted your line. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. My name is Maple Osterbrink. I live in Chapel Hill. I'm a member of No Coal UNC. I'm in Sunrise Movement, Chapel Borough, North Carolina Sunrise. I'm in two church committees for environmental. I'm in Beyond Extreme Energy and Ash. People in the places we live. I'm in the National Climate Crisis Policy for an Earth Bill. Those are my from this cogen facility it is coal and both of which are killing the atmosphere. It makes me sick knowing it's hurting me and the people in Orange County, my planet, unnecessarily. Like everybody's talking about, everyone's covered most of the on purpose at this point. The parts per million off the charts. My senior apartment building is in the plume of much the plume of badness on a less scale. This infuriates me and as usual comes before all of us young and old students and students are put paying their, you know, school loan and they're paying for coal, you know, gas to, to kill the planet. It's it's ridiculous. And I shudder when I hear the trains now because it's only for coal. Those trains coming in every day at least it I did the math. It's a million pounds a day of coal. And those the coal is coming from Appalachia and the workers there and their mountains are still being damaged by coal day in and day out. The ones that are still able to work and don't have the black lung already. I used to like trains, but hearing them makes me sad. And I found out that UNC owns part of the railroad. Imagine that. Isn't that convenient? They have stock in that, that railroad. Railroad's all private now. I'm finding out a lot of things I didn't know before. So that's a financial scheme to be a for them for a long time. Um, electrification of the trains all around the United States. We want our trains back for good things, people, you know, and, and um, get trucks off the road. Anyway, I'm in a group for that too. It's called Solutionary Rail. But your unacceptable draft permit prevents North Carolina from achieving our new climate goals that Governor Roy set up for a few years now. We've been working on that. No, this permit is not going to be permitted. It would not do these things because it's not going to happen. We are fighters. You've got some real fighters on your hand. You know that. Um, and so it's a classic example, like Jovita said, of environmental racism here. There's 35% non-white people here in Chapel Hill. It's a moral issue. It's a criminal at this point, a criminal activity, because it's against the UN. It's against the EJ laws of the EPA, even though it's a borderline case here. With the, it's technically the EJ laws, but still environmental racism is, ramp, is rampant. And, and this is an example of it. So it's unenforceable because it will burn so hot. That's our main silo issue today, but it's the big picture too. Um, we're checking with EPA on the legalities of this because the clean power plan that Obama had. So things are changing because the administration and Biden, because- Maple, you've cold. exceeded your three minutes. Can you please close your comments? Are you sure it hasn't been just two? <laughs> All right, and I'm sorry. Is, okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, and methane is worse as well. They're both bad, so we don't want it, and we want everybody to work together. M Michael Abrazenska 
you know, you're, you're there. We need you to work together with Governor Roy, Ms. Delgatti, all the people. You got to get your act together, people, and figure something out, and we'll help you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mabel. All right. Our next person speaking is Alexa Kleistuber, and following Alexa is Jocelyn Sai. Alexa, uh, if you have dialed in by phone, please press star three. So we can identify your line, please. Alexa, if you dialed in by phone, please press star three. All right, we'd have to move, move on. Okay. Next is Jocelyn Tsai, and following Jocelyn will be, um, if Sammy comes up next, but does Sammy still want to wait until the very end? Uh, no, I believe he's on, so we can unmute okay. him. Okay. Uh, so Jocelyn's there. next, followed by Sammy. Jocelyn, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so we can identify your line. Jocelyn. We'll have to move on. Okay. So uh, next to speak will be Sammy Slade. Sammy? Sammy, go ahead. I can't, I'm sorry, can't hear you. Um, yes, I'm, I'm about to, uh, I'm in the council meeting and we're about to approve of what I want to share today. Could I uh, allow one more speaker before me? Sure. Thank you. Yes, we can try. Thank you. All right, so our next speaker will be Jen Galler, followed by John Butteroff. Jen, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line, please. Jen? Okay, let's move on to the next person. All right, so next would be I pronounced it probably wrong, John. John Batoris. John, your uh, yes. line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, perfect. Uh, good evening. My name is John Bodorf with cleanitsforkids.org. I'm here to speak against Permit 15B, the removing of the heat input limit. Air pollution from coal plants is linked to asthma, cancer, heart and lung disease, neurological problems, acid rain, global warming, and other serious environmental and health issues. Burning coal emits mercury, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, methane, carbon dioxide, particulate matter, lead, cadmium, and other toxic heavy metals, along with carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds, which cause or ozone. Mining for coal and disposing of coal waste is also horribly polluting and destructive. Ash and slag from burning coal is stored in ponds and landfills and contains lead, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, and even uranium. These toxic heavy metals pollute the land and water. Coal ash is one of the biggest types of industrial waste in the U.S. The burning of coal must stop. It is imperative that you do not allow UNC to burn any more coal. As it is, it is ridiculous that UNC is using coal for their power when clean energy is cheap and readily available. Please do not remove the heat input limit. Please protect the health of children and the environment and deny the permit. Thank you so much. This is again, this is John with cleansforkids.org. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, I have made it through the list um, of names and several second time through in hopes that they had joined us online later. So the only one left, unless we go back through that list one more time, uh, Rahat, the only person left online that I know has responded to speak would be Sammy. Yes, that is correct. So let me see at this time if I can unmute him so we can speak. Sammy, are you able to make your comments now? Yes, I am oh, good. ready. Sammy, mute yourself. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm ready. I'm just muted myself on the other meeting. Um, let, me, let me just mute my mute them. Um, sorry about that. And let me find what it is. We literally just approved of this uh, letter from our our mayor um so dear sir madam um thank you for the opportunity to comment on these unc chapel hills title five permit renewal and modification the town of carborough has a significant interest in this issue as unc coal powered burning 
plant lies on the border between Chapel Hill and Carborough and therefore affects air quality for residents of Carborough neighborhoods and visitors to our central business district as much as it impacts those in Chapel Hill and our historic um, African-American neighborhoods. Furthermore, the town of Carborough has adopted climate justice goals. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one here. Um, furthermore, the town of Carborough, my bad. Um, let me find the right one. So, um, so this is on, on behalf of our mayor. Uh, she writes on behalf of the town of Carborough. We have a significant interest in this disproportionately negatively affects impacts of air quality for residents of Carborough's historically black community environmental justice and equity neighborhoods of Tin Top, Pine Knolls and North Sides and visitors to our central business district as much as it impacts those in Chapel Hill. The town of Carborough has a significant interest in this issue, issue as UNC's coal burning power plant lies on the border between Chapel Hill and Carborough and disproportionately negatively impacts the air quality of residents of Carborough's historically black community and environmental justice and equity neighborhoods of Tin Top, Pine Knolls, Northside and visitors to our central business district as much as it impacts those in Chapel Hill. The town of Carborough has adopted climate justice goals for doing our part to mitigate the climate emergency that we're in. Climate scientists describe a quickly closing window of time to phase out all greenhouse gas emissions globally. With every day of inaction, we increase the probability of triggering irreversible tipping points that threaten the existence of many species, including our own. While we recognize the complexity of transitioning away from coal and other financial and energy commitments that UNC has made toward this effort, our council is still very troubled by the fact that UNC is seeking to renew this per permit. In 2010, former Chancellor Holden Thorpe committed to closing the plant and abandoning the use of coal by 2020. Now in 2021, UNC has a newly revised plan that papers over the previous commitment with an undefined timeline for phasing out coal. We find it disturbing that any coal-fired power plant are still being permitted by NCDAQ. Aside from this, however, there are two main areas of concern that the town of Carbio uh, has with a draft permit that NC Division of Air Quality has proposed for UNC air polluting facilities. Heat in, a, heat input limit. DAQ's proposal to remove from the permit the limit on how much coal UNC may burn per hour or heat input limit is very troubling. From a common sense perspective, allowing UNC to burn unlimited amounts of coal within an hour period releases uncontrolled amounts of air pollution into our community. The recent revelation from the ongoing Clean Air Act litigation against UNC that the university has violated, violated its heat input limit 269 times since May of 2019, demonstrates the real and present danger of the public health in our community. Federal Judge Catherine C. Eagle's October 2020 ruling that the heat input limit in UNC's current air permit is an enforceable limit further, that is, it is an enforceable limit, further reinforces the significance of this provision, DAQ's pollution control program for UNC. With this recent history in mind, it is disconcerting to see DAQ proposing to absolve UNC of its responsibility to control its air pollution through this most basic of pollution control measures. We call upon DAQ to reinstate the heat input limit in UNC's new Title V permit and to make it an explicitly enforceable permit limit. B, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide emissions limits. A related problem is that DAQ's draft permit contains no limit on the amount of deadly sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide pollution that UNC may, may emit. Exposure to these pollutants may result in asthma attacks, a variety of respiratory illnesses, heart attacks, and even premature death. The problem with DAQ's proposal is related to our, our prior point. DAQ cannot enforce a limit on the total amount of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide pollution UNC can emit without also imposing a heat input limit on the university. We call upon DAQ to impose limits on the total amount of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide UNC may emit through its new Title V permit. Please study the seriousness of these points as you consider renewal of this permit. Sincerely, Lydia E. Lavelle, Mayor of Town of Carborough. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Sammy. So at this point, we've been through twice for names uh, of calls or hot. Should we continue one more time through to give opportunity to speak to the registered people or 
do we proceed um, to the next step of the hearing? Um, Betsy, as the hearing officer, it's your call. Um, My call. Okay. Um, well, we have called for some people twice, so I think that is plenty for the evening. We are now at 737. So, um, it, it, uh, this time at 737, that's all the names that we have for the pre-registers. Uh, if you did not register to speak for tonight, but you still want to provide comments on the issue of the air quality permit uh, for the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, remember that there are several ways to provide comments until the end of that period. Again, the comment period does end relatively soon on Thursday, May 6 at 5 p.m. There are ways to make those comments. I'm going to go over those again for everyone, just in case. Um, you can call the phone number 919-707-8726 and leave a voicemail message with your first and last name, who you were representing, and state your comments on the phone message related to the permit. Or you can also provide written comments until the comment period ends. Uh, to provide written comments, we have an email address that you can use, and that email address is on your screen. It is DAQ dot public comments at ncdenr dot gov uh, and when you send those comments in the email if you don't mind uh, use the subject line for uh, unc 15b um, little tagline that's provided you'll see that on the public notice that'll help us to know what that's about and the third way that you can also provide comments is just plain old mail mail it in to us to the addresses that are listed on the public, um, the public hearing uh, notice that's also on our website. You can access it there to get those addresses. Again, you have access to both the central office and the Raleigh regional office between now and Thursday. If you wish to review the files for yourself, but please call ahead of time to make that appointment so we can make COVID um, preparations. So um, based on tonight's information that was received, uh, I will make a recommendation to the director of the Division of Air Quality for his consideration in making a final decision on whether to issue, modify, or deny the air quality permit to UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, Michael, do you have any comments to add before we adjourn this hearing? Just want to thank uh, everybody that attended the hearing and spoke tonight, and uh, we will incorporate your comments into the final hearing report. And thank you for um, uh, your role tonight, Betsy. And oh, uh, that's you're it. welcome. All right. Well, I thank everybody for your cooperation, your attendance, and your interest in the air quality and permitting process. And this meeting is now adjourned. Have a great evening. <laughs>